Hi, I'm Kevin Dixon, a solar engineer here in Denver, Colorado, and I'm going to talk about the system that's on my house. It's a prototype cold climate recirculation freeze protection system, and the intent is to minimize the number of components. Uh, it's a SunTask 30 tube collector. It's, I've mounted a pressure relief valve on the end of the header. Uh, that's in case if, if the experimental system ever freezes up on the uh, supply and return pipes, then pressure could build in the header and the relief valve would get rid of that extra pressure. Uh, we've got just painted Armaflex as the uh, compromise pipe insulation system. Uh, you know, it, it's not very good, it doesn't last very long. There's some shrinkage and that's what causes those gaps. Um, another gap, the longitudinal gap is caused because this is the Home Depot stuff that comes with uh, pre-glued slits and that doesn't work outside. Uh, but this is high temperature, high pressure hose and it does um, handle the stagnation conditions when they occur. If the pump failed during strong sunshine, the steam bubble forms and it works its way back to the system. Uh, and it actually melted the polyethylene pipe insulation right there. Steam bubble came back this far. Uh, it probably goes 30 feet from the collectors in this half inch copper pipe. Um, there's a hose transition connection to the uh, outdoor pipe, which is, like I say, hose. <clears throat> the place where this is going to freeze first in most houses is the penetration because there's negative pressure there. And so air pressure, air, cold air from the outside is going in there uh, because your basement is under negative air pressure. Uh, but I sealed it up very well so that it's going to be minimized, but still there's apt to be some air migrating inside. So I ran the collector loop in soft half inch copper. Uh, my flow rates are telling me I can go to 3 8 inch copper, even though I'm using a tiny pump. Uh, but I'm getting a gallon and a half per minute in this in a 50 foot run of uh, half inch OD or 5 8 OD copper uh, there's another high temperature that's when the pump started and pushed some really hot water down here uh, I've got an 80 gallon tank I've got some instrumentation going to see how how uh, it performs and how much heat is lost due to the recirculation at night to prevent freezing. Uh, so we're pumping over one gallon per minute and one gallon per minute in this system actually causes a little bit of short cycling. Um, half gallon per minute is uh, less short cycling but uh, the collector efficiency may go down a little bit. Right now the bottom of the tank is 139, the collector is at 150, uh, so we had a nice sunny day. You can hear that it's still running, uh, it's getting to be 2.30 in the afternoon. We've got a 9 watt pump from Tops Flow. You can probably hear it. I'm using PEX on the suction side of the pump just because it's easy to use uh, and these shark bites are reusable. I have a six gallon extra domestic hot water extra expansion tank. Uh, during, those, during the times when that steam bubble occurs, um, it's got to be pretty big and handle the expansion, more than just the expansion of the water due to temperature change. 
So, uh, this system really only has a pump, a controller. Typically, you don't need the flow meter, and this is a low temperature flow meter, so it's it won't handle uh, extreme conditions. Uh, city, pr it's at city pressure because there's no heat exchanger, uh, so it's running 62 psi. Here are the last car temperature loggers, data loggers. I've got one at the top of the tank. You know, this is an electric tank and it's got uh, ports for heating elements at the top and the bottom. Uh, and that's where I've got the data loggers and the this is the collector sensor is down here as well. Um, I'm data logging top of the tank, bottom of the tank. I'm logging collector return and I don't need to monitor collector supply because that's the same as the bottom of the tank. Uh, now, the part of the freeze protection system is this Taco electric ball valve. They used to call them EBVs. Um, they, are, they just call them zone valves nowadays. This is normally open. So that means if I have a power failure, that valve will open because there's no power to it. Um, what, what makes it open? Well, it's got a capacitor that's uh, charged, and so if it loses power, then the capacitor runs the motor and opens it. And these don't stick like Honeywell zone valves that have rubber pressed onto a seat that vulcanizes itself onto the seat and sticks. So um, that's the backup freeze protection during power failure is that opens and then the heat from the tank goes up to the solar panels and reverse thermosiphons. Um, we need a, a normally closed relay to accomplish the circuitry for that. There's an old Honeywell. So, uh, and then the rest of the time when there is power, see that little snowflake? That means the Steka will turn this controller on at 40 degrees if the collector sensor reaches 40 degrees and then off when the collector reaches 45 degrees. Uh, that's been working great for a year so far and this year we're going to test, we're going to simulate a pump failure and that'll cause our supply lines to freeze probably and we just want to make sure that the collector doesn't get damaged during that situation. Uh, of course the collector will thaw out every day and we just don't know if it freezes hard enough at night to crack the header which is made out of rigid copper. If you have any questions please make a comment here below. Thanks.